Welcome to the EKG Guy, if this is your first time. I'm glad you could join us, and welcome back if you're returning. So here we're going through our ECG coding reference guide, okay? So those of you that don't have access yet, what do you want to do is put this in your URL, your search bar, and go to that. You'll come to this page, and what you'll do is put your email in, click Submit, check your email, okay? You'll get a link that you'll want to click on to confirm your email, and then you'll get access here, okay? And you'll come to the coding reference guide, which is this one. Now, if you're returning, all you do is you can go to that link and then put your email in, and you'll be directly, so you'll bypass that whole thing. So that's just the first time. Again, our website is www.ekg. MD, okay, and then if you're interested in our course and our new updates, you can check here. All right, so go to the reference guide, and what we're doing now is we're in this last portion of part one. So you'll click there, and you'll go down to biatrial enlargement. So we're going to look at biatrial enlargement and some of the findings. All right, so let's get started. So by atrial enlargement, what this means is that the criteria for both left and right atrial enlargement are met okay so it should make sense if the patient has right atrial enlargement or left atrial enlargement or the combination so what we're pretty much doing is ensuring that both of these processes are met so if you look let's review the right atrial enlargement criteria okay and just to recall when we look for atrial abnormalities we're looking at the p wave okay whether it's in two three oops two three or avf or lead V1 or V2, okay? And V1 and V2, we can have those biphasic P waves, okay? And remember, so in right atrial enlargement, in the inferior leads, okay? So right atrial enlargement, we're looking for peaking of those P waves, okay? Or P pulmonale. So what you want is that the P wave has something like this, okay? So the P wave goes up and it's at least 2.5 millimeters in amplitude. Okay, so that's what you see. The pulmonale you can think of peaked for P and also pulmonale because there's often this is a result of uh, problems in the lungs. Okay, COPD is an example. Now in the uh, leads V1 or V2, what you want to look for, again, you're looking at the initial portion of the P wave. So in this case, what you want is that this, again, the amplitude, to be greater than 1.5 millimeters, okay? We said we can remember these because there's 2.5 and 1.5 because the two can be seen in lead two and the 1.5 can be seen in lead V1, okay? So that may be a way to remember it. So that's that. <clears throat> Next, let's look at left atrial enlargement Okay, and in the inferior leads, what we're wanting to see are that notch P waves. So you may see something like this, okay? The M mitrale, often mitral valve disorders can cause this, among others. But what we're looking for is that the duration is prolonged. So the duration is at least 120, or pretty much, usually we say over 110 milliseconds, okay? We put 120, but over 110. So if it hits the three boxes, I would say that's sufficient. And then you see these peaks here, they should be at least 40 milliseconds apart, okay? Or one small box. Now in V1, we're looking now at the terminal portion of the P wave. So you see the initial and now the terminal and the terminal represents left atrial depolarization and what you want is that the width to be one millimeter and the depth to be one millimeter okay so that's pretty much it that's kind of a simple rule of thumb there all right so let's look at some examples here so in this first one you can see v1 here's clearly at least one millimeter deep and one millimeter wide, that terminal portion, okay? The same thing if you look at V1 down here, you can see that it's quite deep, okay? So quite deep and, and wide enough, all right? So that's there. You can also see that these are somewhat wide, okay? And there is some notching. It's not perfect like an M-shaped as we see there, but there is some notching there, and it is wide enough. So in both cases, left atrial enlargement was present. 
Now, how about right atrial enlargement? Well, with right atrial enlargement, we're looking at the initial portion in V1. We don't really see it here, right? We don't see that initial portion, but in lead two down here, you can see that it, they are peaked enough, okay? The peaking of it is um, at least 1.5 uh, or 2.5 millimeters, okay? So 2.5 in lead two, all right? So that was actually present. So this patient had biatrial enlargement. Okay, and actually the same thing was true in this one, this patient. And it's a much easier, those big spikes are pacemaker spikes, but you can clearly see here, this is the left atrial depo or, uh, abnormality. And then you can see these peaked P waves here, okay? All from the right atrium in V1, okay, that we're seeing. Same thing here in these, uh, in lead two, you can see that peaking. So these are perfect, great examples um, that we saw by atrial enlargement. You, okay, and clearly down in the second one, you can you have an excellent example of that. Okay, so again, you want to meet the criteria for both left and right atrial enlargement, and then you want the right atrial enlargement features. Remember, in the inferior leads, it's at least 2.5 millimeters in peaking. Okay, that initial portion in the lead V1 or V2, it's at least 1.5 millimeters. So notice here in right atrial enlargement, you're looking at amplitude. And in left atrial enlargement, you have amplitude, okay? Remember in inferior leads, you're looking for um, <clears throat> that width, the M-shaped, okay, of it being prolonged, and as well as that notching. So amplitude and duration here, okay? Mostly duration uh, that you're seeing here because it's stretching. Remember the second portion of the P wave, so if you draw a P wave here, a biphasic, the initial portion represents right atrial uh, depolarization, and this represents left atrial depolarization. The same is true with just a regular P wave in one of the inferior leads. The initial portion, if you were to kind of draw this, kind of looks like this, and then you'll have the terminal portion, and that combined makes this. So this would be right atrial and left atrium. The right atrium is always depolarizing before the left atrium. And that's because, remember, this presumes sinus rhythm is present. So if you have your right atrium here and your left atrium, this would be your right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay. Your sinus node is up here. Okay. Your internal pathways, AV node, the right bundle branch, left bundle branch, and left anterior and posterior fascicle, and a Bachmann bundle. So remember, these presume sinus rhythm is present, so the rhythm starting here. That means the right atrium is depolarizing first and then the left atrium, okay? And that's why the initial portion is right atrial depolarization and the terminal portion, left atrial depolarization. So that's important to note. Sinus rhythm should be present when you're calling any of these atrial abnormalities, as that's how these criteria were initially formulated. Okay, so this is biatrial enlargement, something you're pretty much, if you know right and left atrial um, enlargement criteria, you can make this, all right? Not a common finding, but something that we can see. And there's some examples here. Now, if you're looking for more detail on how we approach this, the EKG course goes into detail of all of these and common clinical scenarios that you can see. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are, um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, 
you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level, with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.